Hare Krishna, Om Ahyana Timanda Sian, 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 Militam Yena, Tasmai Si Gurve Nama. Sit Sit Taimana Vistam Stab Tam Yena, Buddhadish Vamud Kadama, Nayam Tadantis Vapadantikam. Vandiyam Si Hu Si Yuda Padakamalam, Si Yung Vaishnavam Sian, Si u pam tu cha tam sa kana rakna tam pitam tam sa ji vam sa tve tam sa vadu tam pa jana sa i tam sa krishna ci tanya de vam. Si rada krishna pa dan sa kana lita si visha kam pitam sa. He krishna karuna sinu dina bando ti at pati ko pe sa ko pa kanta rada kanta namastati. Tapta kanshna kaolan ki rati vrindavana shve vishabana sutta devi pranama mahari priye Pankha kalpta vishan ki pasina revisha patnam pavana bhyo vaisna bhyo anamo nama Chai shi krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda Shri advait kadada shivasa adhikaura bhakta vrindu Hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hari Hari. Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastai Bhutali Shumati Bhakti Charasam Tinami. Namo Vishnu Padai Krishna Vastai Bhutali Shumati Bhakti Vedanta Shumati Tinami. Namaste Sarasvata Devi Gauravani Pacharani. Nirvishesha Srinivadi Paskachai Tazataranam. Shila Prabhupada Ki. Hi. So today's a set mo- day for our movement. We all have heard probably meantime of the passing away of Pankajangri, who was dear to all the devotees in Iskon. But uh, but this despite we must continue and. Uh, Remember, remember is. Remember his uh, ex- exemplary behavior, that and his sweetness, that uh, I. Pankasangi Prabhu also traveled in Europe and I was many times with him. It's a very nice remembrance of him. But today we must go on and uh, we will discuss today the last chapter of this section. The last chapter of this section, chapter 28. Releasing Nanda Maharaj from the clutches of Varuna. So we will start with reading uh, text. The first two text. And chapter 28. This is Krishna book, we need the Bhagavatam. Simad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 28. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Shri Badaranaya Ovacha Ekadasyam nirahara sambhayasa janartanam snadam nandastukalindyam dvadasyam jalamavishat. Sri Bhadranai said, Having worshipped Lord Janardan and fasted on Ekadashi day, Nanda Maharaj entered the water of the Kalindi on the Dvadashi to take his bath. Text to Tamhe Hitvana Yatpityo Varunasya Sion Kittikam 
אבקיאי אשרים ואלם אבשתם ולקם נשי. בקוס נאנה מארץ אנטר תבות אין דה דארק נייט דיסריקרדינג דאט דה טיים וואס אינוספישוס A demoniac servant of Varuna seized him and brought, and, and brought him to his master. Read the, the purple, BBT, BBT purple. Nanda Maharaj was intent on breaking his fast during that Vatasi day, of which there were only, of, of which there remained only a few minutes. Does he enter the water to bath at an auspicious time before the first dawn light? Thus, usually the breaking of the fast uh, is calculated. It's calculated and uh, it starts. Moment, and there is some disturbance. I don't know where it comes from. That's better thing, yeah. So it's calculated when as astrologically when to uh, break the fast. Sometimes it's quite early. And sometimes it's quite short. But uh, I remember a few years ago that uh, we were at the back of the Manor and like the, the breaking of the fast was three past six to six past six. You had just three minutes to break your fast. So we were, we were all waiting in, outside just out the temple door with, with the clock and then uh, we had all like rain in, <laughs> for these three minutes. But So, but here it said there remained only a few minutes to the end of the water of, to bath at an auspicious time before the first dawn light. The servant of Varuna who arrested Nanda Maharaj is stated here to be an Asura or demon for obvious reasons. First, the servant was foolishly ignorant of Nanda Maharaj's position as the pastime father of the absolute truth. that uh, 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 mute. Also, Nanda Maharaj's intention was to carry out the injunctions of the scriptures. Therefore, Varuna's servant could not have, should not have been arrested, should not have arrested Nanda on technical grounds to be bathed in the Yamuna at an auspicious time. Later in this chapter, Varuna himself will say, Ajana ta mama, mama ke na mudena. This was done by an ignorant servant, servant who is a fool. That, uh, so, uh, this foolish servant did not understand the position of Krishna or Nanda Maharaj. or devotional service to the Lord. That, uh, in conclusion, it is clear that Lord Krishna wanted to give his personal audience to Varuna and, all, and simultaneously accomplish, accomplish other didactic purposes. Thus this wonderful past and will now unfold. We have text three. That Sukrosyastam Apasyanta Krishna Ramati Gopaka Paravam Statupasyatya Pitram Varunaritam Tat Antikam Gatorajam Svanam Abhaya Dovibu O king, not seeing Nanda Maharaj, a cold man cried out, cried loudly cried out, O Krishna, O Ram, Lord Krishna heard their cries, and understood that his father had been captured by Varuna. Therefore, 
The Almighty Lord who makes his devotees fearless went to the court of Varuna. So usually when, when someone is in the water and is going down for more than one minute, yeah, you think it's not coming up again. <laughs> and when, so they were in, in, in panic, they came to Krishna. They lied, they called out, cried out to Krishna. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur explains that when Nandamaraj went to bathe in the river, he was accompanied by several coward men. When Nanda did not come out of the water, then they began to cry, and Lord Krishna immediately came there, understanding the situation. <laughs> then Krishna entered the water and went to the court of the demigod Varuna, determined to free his father and the other coward men from fear of a mere demigod. <laughs> so this, this chapter today has, has two parts. The first is about here that uh, the saving of Nanda Maharaj. And the second part, that the uh, resident of Indravan will approach Krishna and tell him, yes, since you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as predicted by Gangacharya, then, so, Please fulfill our desires. And Krishna will say, What do you want? They wanted all the different things, but, but, but uh, the dominant desire was show us your spiritual world. And he showed them Brahman, the Brahma Jyoti, he showed, showed them Vaikuntha, and then he showed them their own home. Koloka Vrindavan. That's very interesting. We will hear about that. So, this comment by Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, yeah, Krishna is all-knowing and all-pervading, and immediately he understood what happened. That, uh, now we have text 4. Praptam Viksha Rikesh Praptam Tam viksha rishi kesham loka pana sapariya mahatya pushait faha tadarsana mahotsava. Seeing that the Lord Rishi Kesha had arrived, the demigod Varuna worshipped him with elaborate offerings. Varuna was in a state of great jubilation upon seeing the Lord, and he spoke as follows. That, uh, so, so Brahma and Indra before, they got darshan of Krishna. So Varuna, instead of fear, because we remember Indra was fear, fearful, instead of fear, he felt great jubilation upon seeing Krishna. But he felt having committed an offense because the master is responsible for the mistakes of his servants. And now in text 5 to 8, Varuna will speak. speak. So Krishna is standing before Varuna. Shri Varuna Vacha Adhyamene Brito Dehe Dhyavartu Dikata Prabhu Tvatpada Pacho Bhagavan Avapu Param Am at Fana, Shivaruna said, Now my body has fulfilled its functions. Indeed, now the goal of my life is achieved, O Lord. Those who accept your lotus feet, O personality of Godhead, can transcend the path of material existence. So, Purport. Varuna ecstatically exclaims that since he has now seen the infinitely gorgeous body of Lord Krishna, the trouble of assuming a material body has now been supremely justified. Indeed, the Arta, the goal, or the real value of Varuna's life has now been achieved because Lord Krishna is transcendental. Those who accept his lotus feet go beyond the boundary of material existence and thus 
only the spiritual unaware would presume that the, the Lord's lotus feet are material. Namastu byam bhagavate bhamane paramatmane ya yatra shyate maya loka shristi vikalapana Our base is unto you, the Supreme Personality of God, at the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Soul within, within whom there is no trace of illusory energy, which which orchestrates the creation of this world. The word Shruti is significant here. Shruti of Vedic literature consists of authorized statements made by the Lord himself or his enlightened representatives. Thus neither the Lord nor recognized spiritual authorities would ever say that within the Absolute Truth, the Personality of God, that there is the fault of illusion. Srila Siddharswam points out that the word Brahmane here indicates the Lord, the Lord is full in himself and that the term Paramatmane indicates he is the controller of all living entities. Thus within the Supreme Being, complete in himself and omnipotent, we do not find any jurisdiction of the material energy. Text 7 Then Achanata mama kena Mudena karya vedina Anityam tava pita tatpavangsan temarati Your father who is sitting here was brought to me by a foolish ignorant servant of mine who did not understand his proper duty, therefore please forgive us. The word I am, this one here, clearly indicates that Krishna's father Nanda Maharaj was present as Varuna was speaking. In, fa in fact, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur states that Varuna had seated Shinanda on a jewel throne and, and had personally worshipped him out of respect. Technically, Nanda Maharaj was correct in entering the water just before sunrise. The following explanation is given by Shiva Goswami in his commentary on the first verse of this chapter. After an especially short Ekadashi measuring only 18 hours, about 6 hours of the lunar day, in which the fast had to be broken, namely the Dvatasi, had to already expired before the dawn. Since at sunrise the proper time for breaking the fast would have passed, none of us decided to enter the water at an otherwise inauspicious time. Of course, for a servant, servant should have been aware of these technical details, which are meant for strict followers of the Vedic rituals. Above and beyond that, Nanda Maharaj was acting as the Supreme Lord's father and was therefore a most sacred person beyond the touch of insignificant cosmic bureaucrats like the foolish servant of Varuna. Amapyanu Ram Krishna Kartamaransa Sheshadrik O Krishna, O seer of everything, please give your mercy even to, even to me. O Govinda, you are most affectionate to your father. Please take him home. Now we will look at uh, comments of Vishwana Shakavarti Thakur. Hmm. On text 5, Varuna said, All the thousands of bodies which I have received till now have been useless because in all those lives I did not see you. That, uh, Today my body has become successful. That is the indication of the word Nibritta, which comes from Ni, for Nitaram, complete, successful, and Britta, accepting a body. This morning I heard a lecture of Srila Prabhupada and I said, we are all very old, because the soul is very old. That's when to so many, so many worlds. And we see here, Varuna is thinking of all the thousands of bodies he has got. All useless, he said, because there was no Krishna consciousness. So Varuna said, today I've understood 
what is most valuable. Though I possess all four varieties of jewel salt, until now I have not obtained such jewel as, as you. Those who worship your lotus feet can cause the ocean of material existence. How fortunate I am to attain your darshan without any effort. You are, Varuna said you are approached by the three paths of bhakti, jnana and yoga. I pay my respect to you as Paravam, Brahman and Paramatma. Those who claim that these realizations are tinged with Maya are wrong. These realizations are not touched by Maya, which makes the various things in this of this world. Krishna said, Why you are embarrassing me by praising me like this? In answer, Varunya says, I've really offended you. With this mood, he speaks the verse. Varuna continues, according to the Bhakti Shastris, one can enter the water before sunrise after an, uh, after an especially short e Ikadashi. Not knowing this, Akarya Vedina, one of my fuller servants, committed a great offense by bringing your father here. The offense of my servant is also mine. So this is is a, in his commentaries, he, he, he put in his dialogue between Varuna and Krishna this comment of Jiva Goswami, that uh, the technical detail about the Shota Kaladashi. So, pointing with his hand, Varuna showed Nanda seated on a jewel throne, which Varuna himself had offered in order to worship Nanda Maharaj who was eternally engaged in remembering Krishna, his own worshipable deity. So we can understand this Vajjavas, if they are not, they have great mystic power to stay for such a long time under water. That, uh, yeah, Subarimuni had also that power. So Varuna continued, O King, you are the ocean of forgiveness. But because I am the ocean of offense, you can punish me suitably. If you wish that, uh, so, then we have text 9. Si Sukha Ovacha. Evam prasadita krishna bhagavangi ishvareshvara adaya gatsva pitaram bandunam savaham mudam. Sukadev Kaswan said, thus satisfied by Lord Varuna, Sri Krishna, the personality of God, it, Lord of all of Lords, took his father and returned home, where their relatives were overjoyed to see them. That, uh, so in this pastime, Lord Krishna gives a sublime demonstration of his position as the Supreme Lord of all Lords. Varuna, the demigod of seas, is most powerful. Yet he was happy. He was happy to worship even Lord Krishna's father, or to speak of Krishna himself. That, uh, so this is the last chapter before entering the Rasa dance. So we have to turn off our material consciousness to enter in this pastime in Vrindavan. That, uh, no, text 10. Nandastva indriyam drishtva lokopala mahodayam krishne sa sanatim tesham Nanda Maharaj had been astonished to see for the first time the great opulence of Varuna, the ruler of the ocean planet, and also to see how Varuna and his servants had offered such humble respect to Krishna. Nanda described all this fellow, all this to his fellow power man. So this takes place on the Dvadasi, that uh, 
you can read the commentary, short commentary of Fish Fanat. Nanda Maharaj was astonished to see the first to, to see for the first time the fabulous opulence Mayodiam of Varuna, the ruler of the ocean planet, Lokapala. The word Te Sham is plural in number to indicate that Varuna and his followers were offering obeisance to Krishna. After breaking the fast at the proper time, Nanamaraj sat comfortably and spoke to his friends and relatives, Satchatibya. Satchatibya. That, uh, So, text 11. So the Kaurmans, they heard all what Nandamarat said about his experience in the kingdom of Varuna. That um, we have heard, or he's telling all what we have heard in verses 5, 6, 7, 8. That, um, so, but their love for Krishna did not diminish. Yeah. So we love Krishna. If we love Krishna, what will be our then destination when we leave this world? That, uh, okay, text 11. Tesat Sukya Dio Rajan Matvagopas Tamishparam Apinas Vagatim Sukshman Upadasyat Adishvaram Hearing about Krishna's past and Sri Varuna, the coward man considered that Krishna must be the Supreme Lord and their minds, O King, were filled with eagerness. They thought, Will the Supreme Lord bestow up us his transcendental abode? Purple. The cold men were filled with excitement upon hearing how Krishna had gone to the abode of Varuna to rescue his father. Suddenly they realized that they were in fact dealing with the Supreme Personality of God. They joyfully conjectured among themselves about their auspicious destination after finishing their present life. That, uh, comment of Vishvana. Realizing that they were in fact dealing with the Supreme Lord, the cowboy boys became eager to know if Sri Krishna would take them to his transcendental abode, Svagatim Vaikuntha. The coward man said, O oh, Nanda, previously you told us that Ganga Garga Muni had said that Krishna was like Narayan but not identical to Arayan, Narayan. But now you have concluded that Krishna is God by directly hearing Varuna praising him. We think your son Krishna should fulfill the desires of your friends in this material world, because besides being the Supreme Lord, Krishna is also our son, oh, the son of our brother, the son of our sister, and the son of our daughter. We love Krishna and he loves us. Krishna said, O oh, coward man, please take whatever you desire from the Supreme Lord. One, one coward man said, we should take liberation. Another said, let us become residents of Vaikuntha. Every coward man had a different desire. Although the coward man was seeing Krishna as God, it did not even slightly diminish their inti intimacy of their relationship with him. However, he was not, it, that was not the case with Krishna's father Vasudev and his friend Arjuna, whose affectionate relationship was disrupted by observing Krishna's majesty, Ashvarya. Once upon meeting Krishna and Balaram, Vasudev said, You two are not my sons, but the Supreme Lord. Today I surrender to your Lord. Sweet. After seeing Krishna's universal form, Arjuna said, Oh my Lord, please forgive me for whatever I spoke, thinking, thinking of you as a friend.
Now x12 x12 It is vanam sa bhagavam vichaya akila duksvayam sankalpas deetesam kepayaitat asintayat because he sees everything, Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God, it automatically understood what the coward man were conjecturing, wanting to show his compassion, wanting to show his compassion to them by fulfilling their desires, the Lord taught as follows. It's text 12, Vishwanath. Understanding the minds of his relatives, Vanam Krishna taught how to fulfill their desires since he knew that about all types of bliss available in Brahman, Vaikunda and Vajshabhuma Akiladrik. According to the degree of his devotees, Prema, uh, Krishna usually covers or forgets his majesty, but in, in this case his Lila Sakti inspired him with full awareness of his majestic forms simultaneously. Krishna taught, because of tasting the rich sweetness of Krishna Prema, these coward men have understood that the attainment of Brahman and Vaikuntha are insignificant. Nevertheless, I will permit them to realize the bliss of Brahman and Vaikuntha in order to fulfill the desires they are manifesting while playing the roles of unintelligent human beings. Text 13. 13. Chano vailo kaitas mina vicha kama kama bi visava chasugat disu navedas vangatim vamam. Lord Krishna taught certainly people in this world are wandering among higher and lower destinations which they achieve through activities performed according to their desires. And without full knowledge, these people do not know their real destination. And comment of Shiva Goswami. It's, this is a long purport that uh, but it's an important purport. So we will go to it. So Shiva Goswami has elaborately explained how this first applies to the eternally liberated residents of Vrindavan, the Lord's abodes. So, one, the Lord's abode, one of the fundamental philosophical principles of Srimad Bhagavatam is the distinction between two types of illusion, Yoga Maya and Mahamaya, the spiritual and material states of existence respectively. Although Krishna is God, the omnipotent, omniscient supreme being, his intimate associates in the spiritual world love him so that they see him as their beloved child, friend or lover, so that their ecstatic love can transcend the vowed wanderings of mere reference. They forgot that, forget that Krishna is the supreme God of all the universes, and this pure intimate love expands unlimitedly. One may consider the activities of treating Krishna as a helpless child and handsome boyfriend or a playmate to be, to be a manifestation of avidya, ignorance of Lord Krishna's position as God. But the residents of Vrindavan are in fact ignoring the secondary majesty of, of Krishna and focusing intensely on his infinite beauty which is the essence of all existence. In fact, Describing Lord Krishna, the supreme controller and God, is almost a type of political analysis, referring as he does to a hierarchy of, of power and control. Such analysis of levels of power and hierarchies of rule signif is, is significant in a context in which one entity is not fully surrendered in love to a higher entity. In other words, control becomes visible or is consciously felt as control when there is resistance to that control. To cite an example, a pious law abiding citizen sees a policeman as a friend and well-wisher, whereas a criminal 
sees him as a, a threatening symbol of punishment, those who are enthusiastic about governing policies feel not that the government is controlling them, but rather that he is helping them. Thus Krishna is seen as a controller and hence as the Supreme God, while those who are not fully enchanted by his beauty and pastimes, those fully in love with Lord Krishna focus on his sublime attractive features and because of the nature of their relationship with him do not notice his controlling power. His controlling power. The first street. Because this is text 13 uh, that we have uh, a long comment also by Vishwanathya Bhakti Thakur. He says, although that uh, on the, we are yeah, 13 that uh, although it appears to refer to conditioned souls, this first actually applied to the eternally liberated residents of Vrindavan, Krishna says. That, uh, Krishna taught all the desires and actions, karma, karma be, of my father and the Vajravasis are solely dedicated for my pleasure. Seeing me as their helpless child, they are completely unaware that I am the supreme god of all the universes. Wandering in this land of Vrindavan, they have no knowledge of the higher destinations. In this way, the Vajravas are completely unaware of their own exalted positions. My eternal associates in Sri Vrindavan town, which is rarely achieved by others. When my father saw the opulence of Aruna, which is only material, he then considered this Vrindavan, which is the quintessence of Vaikuntha to be inferior to the planet of Varuna. It is just like the fool upon seeing the form and luster of an imperial pearl, considering a valuable first-class pearl to be inferior. Does the covered man see themselves inferior to Varuna and think, uh, and, and think attaining liberation and residence in Vaikuntha is greater than the unique sweetness they relish, they relish in loving me as their son. But after Krishna showed them the Vaikuntha and Koloka Vrindavan, their opinion will change. Liberation and Vaikuntha both depend on me, but I'm completely independent. Nevertheless, it is seen that sometimes I'm dependent on Prima. Though it is evident to all the Vajravasis do not recognize it. Some people become liberated and realize the happiness of Brahman. Brahma Samhita says, Yasya Prabhu Prabhavato Jarananta Koti. Brahman is effulgence coming out of my body. Brahman is unlimited and beyond Maya. I myself say in Bhagavad Gita, Brahmano i Pratishtanim, I'm the basis of the impersonal Brahman. Matya says, my greatness is called the Parabrahman. This Brahman, which is the all-pervading formless light of my fullness, is beyond material perception. However, I am also eternally present in various sweet personal forms, which can be relished by one whose senses are anointed with pain. As for Vaikuntha, Padma Prana says, Matura Mandal is far superior to Vaikuntha. Within Matura is Vrindavan, the eternal transcendental pleasure abode of Sri Krishna, which remains unaffected even by the annihilation of the material world. The Kopala Tapani Upanishad says, Of the seven cities of Burloka, Kopala Puri, residence of Lord Gopal, is the very form of Brahman. Kupala Puri exists on this earth just as a lotus floats on the lake. The Briyat Vamana Purana says, when the universe becomes invisible at, at the time of devastation, only the infinite, eternal, non-material Vaikuntha remains spreading its rays of blissful Brahman. 
Dus daarvan daarvan is vaak zeer te boven man en bij kunta. De koud man die zegt dat dat tijd de experience. The experience of Brahman and Vaikuntha only because they have not seen them with their eyes. Therefore, I will now reveal this to them directly. So one cannot translate this verse as follows. The Vajjavasis were wandering in various rooms from higher species to lower due to ignorance, desire and action, do not know about Brahman, liberation and Vaikuntha, which will be gi given by me. No. All the Vajjavasa Nitya cities who love Krishna in various relationships of intimacy. They are completely unaffected by ignorance, lust or futile activity. The Srimad Bhagavatam says the gopis who regard that Krishna as their son were not subject, subject to the ignorance of material life. Lord Brahma says, what can you give to these Vajjavasas who will not accept the position of liberation? Or Vaikuntha, even if you offer it, one should also see the logical explanations given by the kill, killing of the Putana, which in Bhagavatam 10, 6, verses 37, 40. So this is in a long purport, but I want to finish it. The other purpose are not so long. A simple proof that the essence of Rajshav transcends the lower states of God consciousness rather than fail to attain them is the fact that throughout the past times of, of the Lord they often remember that Krishna is God. Usually they are astonished at as, as, as such remembrance, having been fully absorbed in Krishna as their friend and lover and so on. The word Kam is conventionally used to indicate a material desire or else a spiritual desire so intense that it becomes somehow, somehow an analogous to intense material desire. Still, the fundamental distinction remains material desire is selfish and self-gratificatory. Spiritual desire is free of selfishness, being holy for the pleasure of the other, the Lord. Does the residents of Vidavan execute their daily activities solely for the pleasure of their beloved Krishna? should be remembered that the entire purpose of Krishna's descent into this world is to attract living beings back home, back to God. Two things are required for this. That his pastimes dis display the beauty of spiritual perfection and that they somehow seem relevant and hence interesting to the conditioned souls of this world. The Bhagavatam offers often states that Lord Krishna plays just like a youthful actor and he undoubtedly engages his eternal devotees in the dramatic presentation. Thus Lord Krishna, he amuses to himself that people in this world certainly do not know their ultimate destination. With an obvious touch of the facetious, he, he also thinks in this way about his own eternally liberated associates who are playing in this world like ordinary members of a coward village, last paragraph. Apart from the double meaning obviously presented in this verse, when it is applied it to Krishna's liberated associates, Krishna here makes an entirely direct and pointedly critical observation about ordinary people. When applied to the conditioned souls who are actually wandering throughout the universe, the statement a statement that people are acting out of ignorance and lust is not mitigated by any deeper spiritual meaning. People in general are simply ignorant and they do not seriously, seriously consider their ultimate destination. As usual, Lord Sri Krishna is able to say many profound and complex things in a few words. How fortunate we are that God is not a dry field of energy, a transcendent effulgent blob or nothing at all as far as people would would have it. In fact, he is the most wonderful personality of God that full of absolute personal qualities and certainly whatever we can do, he can do better as evidenced by his brilliant way of speaking. That, uh, so there is a double meaning in this verse 13 that uh, 
So one meaning is that in which in which he speaks to ordinary people. They wander into higher and lower destinations without full knowledge. They don't know their real destination. That's one level. And then there is the other the other meaning. It actually applies to refer to the eternal liberated souls. The residents of Vrindavan who are, uh, who are liberated from Maya. But uh, these residents were thinking themselves ordinary humans, although they are Nitya Siddhis. Now, text 14. It is Sansitya Bhagavan Mahakaruniko Hari Darsayama Sadokam Svam Kopanam Tamasa Param. Thus, deeply considering the situation, the all merciful Supreme Personality of God had revealed to the God man is a boat which is beyond material darkness. It is clear from this verse that the absolute truth dwells in his, in his own eternal abode. Every one of us tries to live as comfortably as possible, surrounding ourselves with peace and beauty. How can we in the same, in the name of logic, begrudge the Supreme Lord, our Creator, the supremely beautiful and comfortable abode known by people in general as the Kingdom of God? 14. We will read Ishkana's comment, shorter comment. Considering Sanshintya, the situation, Krishna, out of his infinite compassion, Mahakaruniko, for the Vajravati, separated the coward man from Vrindavan for a moment and showed them his own attractive, charming spirit of planet, Krishna Loka. Krishna did this to show them the sweetness of Vrindavan was superior to Brahman and Vaikuntha. However, if the Vajravasis achieved Sayutya Mukti merging in Brahman, it would be impossible for them to come out of it. Why? Because when you merge, merge into Brahman, you, you lose your sense of identity. So how can you come out then? Then how would they ever again taste the sweetness of Vrindavan? Because Lord Krishna is feeble, all powerful. He could take them out of Sarucha Mukti and Vaikuntha, which are both beyond the dark darkness of matter. Tamasana Param. So we have also a comment from Srila Sh Swami. He says, his own planet, identical with the Absolute Truth, known as Vaikuntha, which is beyond Tamas, material nature, his own planet, to which the coward men are related, because that's their original home, the Nitya Siddhas coming from there. The possibility of its being by being material is denied by the words beginning with Tamasa. So, he's going to show them something beyond material darkness. It's going to show them his transcendental abode. And he's going to show us the nature of the Vratsavasis also at the same time. He will use them to display their unique love and special position. He's going to show them first Brahma and then Vaikuntha and then Goloka Vaikuntha. So now Text 15. Satyam Yanam Manam Tam Yat Brahma Jyoti Sanatanam Yat Deepa Shanti Muna Yoguna Pai Samahita. Lord Krishna revealed indestructible spiritual effulgence, which is unlimited consciousness, which is unlimited, conscious, and eternal. Sages see that spiritual existence in trance when their consciousness is free free of the modes of material nature. So in text 14, Lord Krishna revealed to the residents of Vrindavan his own abode, the spiritual planet of Krishna Loka. That this and innumerable other Vaikuntha planets float in an infinite ocean of spiritual light called the Brahma Jyoti. 
The spirit of light is in fact the spirit of sky, which Krishna also quite naturally revealed to the residents of Vrindavan. For example, if we want to show the moon to his child, we say, look up in the sky, see the moon over there in the sky. Similarly, Lord Krishna revealed the vast spirit of sky to the residents of Vrindavan, but emphasized in the as emphasized in text 14 and in the following text, following text 16, the actual destination of the Lord's associate, associates was his own spiritual planet. So there is also a commentary here of Sridhar Swami. So, because it is impossible for those who are covered over with material bodies to see such things, First of all, he revealed to them the identity of Brahman, which is distinct from the material body, and, and so forth. There's no suffering. So this is described in the verse beginning with Satyam. Satyam means unchecked. Jnana means not matter. Ananta means unlimited. Sanatam, Vyajyotir means self-luminous. Sanatam means eternal existence. The Brahman that the Jnani see when the material modes subside, he mostly showed them all of this. This is a commentary of this Phanatum text 15. So, the first, uh, he's repeating first these uh, meanings of mentioned by Siddhar Swami. Then he says, the form of Bhagavan Sri Krishna is much sweeter than the impersonal Brahman effusions. This is confirmed by the realization of Atma Rams, such as Sukadev Goswami. Though the form of Bhagavan is also all pervading, he appeared localized in a form of medium sized human light. Though Bhagavan Sri Krishna is free from the six transformations of material nature, he seems to undergo birthing growth, growth also, and so on. Bhagavan is free from the six material disturbances of hunger, thirst, and so on, yet he seems to undergo hunger and thirst, aspire and become tired, express fear and bewilderment, and receive blows in battle. This is because Bhagavan Sri Krishna has unlimited inconceivable energies. Similarly, Vrindavan, like the body of the Lord, which spreads itself through millions of universes, as seen by Brahma, is also limited and localized. The Lord says, this Vrindavan spread over, over five yojanas is like my body. And though the scriptures proclaim that the moving and non-moving entities of Vrindavan are free from the six material disturbances, hunger, thirst, lamentation, illusion, old age and death, one sees to his astonishment that the man, animals, birds and trees in Vrindavan experience hunger, thirst, birth, old age, but want and dissolution. Then we have text 16. 16. So. Tetu Brahma Ratam Nita Machna Krishna Natsu Trita Patricio Brahma Nolo Kom Yatako Jayat Pura The coward man were brought by Lord Krishna to the Brahma Rat made to submerge in the water and then lifted up. From the same vantage point of that Akura saw the spiritual world, the coward man saw the planet of the absolute truth. That uh, so we read this text sixteen, yeah. The unlimited expansion of the spirit of light called the Brahma Jyoti in text 15 is compared to a lake called Brahma Rat. Lord Krishna sub sub submerged the coward man in, in that lake in a sense that he sub submerged them in the awareness of the impersonal Brahman. But then it's indicated by the word Udrita 
He lifted them up to a higher understanding, that of the personality of God in his own planet. As clearly stated here, that Visubha Manoluka, they saw just as Akura did the transcendental abode of the Absolute Truth. The evolution of consciousness may be briefly summarized as follows. In only consciousness we perceive and are attracted to the variety of material things. Rising to the first stage of spiritual consciousness, we transcend material variety and focus instead on the undifferentiated. One which lies behind and gives existence to many. Finally arising to Krishna consciousness, we find that the absolute, absolute spiritual, uh, spiritual one contains its own eternal variety. In fact, since this world is a mere shadow of the ex eternal existence, we should expect to find the spiritual variety within the, within the one and indeed we do find it in the sacred text of Srimad Bhagavatam. Astute readers may note that the pastime involving Akura takes place later in the Bhagavatam, after the present affair with the coward man. The reason Sukadev Goswami says Akura saw Vaikuntha, Pu Vaikuntha Pura previously is that all these incidents took many Placed many years before the conver con conversation between Sukadev and Maharaj Pariksit. So that's the reason. So that is 16. Then, uh, yes, we will read text 17, which is the last text that. Uh, 17. Nam, yeah, seventeen. Nam daya stu tam trist fa paramanam vanifrita krishnam sutatra shandopi stuyamanam suvishmita. So Nanda Maharaj and the coward man felt the greatest happiness when they saw that transcendental abode. They were especially amazed to see Krishna himself there surrounded by the by the personified Vedas who were offering in prayers. Purport. Although the residents of Vrindavan considered themselves ordinary persons, Lord Krishna wanted them to know of their extraordinary good fortune. Thus within, within the, the, the river, the Lord showed his personal abode that uh, the coward men were amazed to see the kingdom of God had exactly the same spiritual atmosphere as their own earthly Vrindavan and, and, and that just as in their Vrindavan Lord Krishna was personally present. In their unique vision he was present as the Lord of the spiritual world. So, so be Srila Bhaktisthanta Sarasvati Maharaj he uh, it says that this first emphasized that Krishna did not merely show the coward man a sample of Vaikuntha, but that he specially revealed Krishna Loka, the greatest of eternal abodes and the natural home of the rest of Vrindavan, who loved Krishna more than anyone else. They saw again Vrindavan and thus they felt very happy. They lost all their wealth when, when they were in Brahman but found Krishna again in Goloka Vrindavan. Goloka Vrindavan is the most intimate part of the Kaikunta planets. Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Maharaj says, The planet which Sri Krishna showed to the coward man is not simply another Vaikuntha. As we would understand from the use of the, of the phrases Svankatim, Gopinam Svalukam and Krishna Cha. Svangati means that it is meant for them. In other words, that abode is a personal abode of the cold man. The word Gopinam has a genetic case ending by which here the connection of the cold man with this planet. 
but but by which there is the connection of the God man with this planet. This indicates the privilege to be in such a relationship. Similarly, the word Krishna is accepted. The fact that Krishna is present there in direct relationship with that place. Certainly, these phrases conclusively establish that this is not just another Vaikuntha, it is quite fitting. It is quite fi fitting that they became full in supreme ecstasy by seeing Goloka and that they became overwhelmed in amazement because this abode is in itself a complete reality. Now we will uh, not just let this pastime go that uh, So I will, uh, I have the recording here of Jiva Goswami's presentation of this chapter, which gives so many details, it's really ecstatic. And so it takes 28 minutes, so and after that we will have question time or comments, so please. Relax and hear attentively Shiva Gosvam. Beginning with Nandamaraj Bailey. Convinced that strict observance of Ekadasi fulfills desires, Rajas King Nanda, as he always had, fasted on that Ikadasi. Early the next morning, because the moment was Dwadasi, and, and although it was still nighttime, the auspicious time for breaking the fast was almost over, kind-hearted Nanda confidently entered the Yamuna River to take his bath and perform auspicious rituals. Still in the water after his bath was completed, Nanda Maharaj, filled with faith in the Vedas, began to meditate on Lord Narayan with single-pointed concentration. From the time of his birth, his saintly heart had been devoted to Lord Narayan. Then, when he attained a son so like Lord Narayan, Nanda's devotion to the Lord increased even more. Then, as King Nanda was wrapped in trance, the servants of Varuna suddenly surrounded him and took him to their master's abode. Effulgent and supported by many pillars, Varuna's underwater palace was situated in Rasatalaloka and it was reached by passing through a great tunnel under the lake in the Yamuna. Had they known the exalted position of Krishna's father, Nanda, the servants of Aruna would not have brought him to their master's abode. What was Nanda Maharaj thinking? Nanda again and again thought, Again and again I see the wonderful glories of my son, a son born to me because I have somehow become very fortunate, glories that fill me with joy and love. Again and again, Nanda thought, Goddess Yogamaya arranged the arrival of Putana and all the other events in Sri Krishna's pastime, so he was just completely enwrapped in his thoughts of Krishna. The servants brought Nanda before Yamuna, before Varuna. Understanding Nanda's identity from his bodily features, and understanding that Nanda Maharaj was not in this world at all, but he was wrapped in meditation upon Lord Narayan. Varuna was filled with awe, fear, respect, and he praised Nanda. He offered him valuable garments and other gifts and had him sit on a glorious throne. Thinking Lord Krishna would not tolerate the capture of his father, Varuna stood at his palace door so he could see Krishna coming from far away. He was filled with fear. Now events in Brazil will be next.
narrated that was what was happening when Nanda Maharaj entered the Yamuna. And what was happening when Krishna entered the water from the point of view of the Vrishbasis. The servants of Nanda, for whom Nanda was both their master and their great treasure, looked in the Yamuna's waters. But nowhere could they see Nanda Maharaj, the father and protector of Sri Krishna. They became frightened. They dove in the waters and searched in direction after direction. Not finding Nanda anywhere, they came out of the water and returned to Brazil. Weeping, they entered Brazil. Krishna, Balaram, and the other leaders of Brazil approached the lamenting servants. Their hearts stunned to hear the news of Nanda's disappearance. Krishna and Balaram made the ground shake as they went eagerly running to the bathing place by the Yamuna. There Sri Krishna became agitated and began to weep. He hugged Balaram and said, Oh my brother, please comfort and protect our mothers and protect everyone else until I return with father and make everyone happy. Only if mother is not allowed to come to this place will I have the power to be successful in my mission of rescuing our father. After speaking these words, St. Krishna began his journey to bring back his father. He tightened his waistband. He assumed a ferocious feature that would shame the most powerful lion. Sri Krishna entered the river's water and he descended into the tunnel that led to Patalalok. Then Queen Yasoda and the other people of Braja touched Lord Balaram's feet and eager to find Krishna asked, where did your younger brother go? And after thinking for a moment, Sri Balaram said to beautiful eyed, but overcome with worries, Queen Yasoda, he replied by saying, Oh, mother, please do not be tormented with worry. Your son will soon return, bringing father with him. He will bring happiness to all his kinsmen. Then Lord Balaram said to his own mother, Rohini, Why do you attack me in this way? Have faith in my words. Comfort and protect Mother Yasoda. With this moment, a soul overcomes. She own, overcome only the power to breathe. She only has the power to breathe and no power to do anything else. Considering Balaram's words a source of consolation, as they certainly had been when Krishna was fighting with Kaliya, the elders of Braja, by speaking many words, gave consolation and hope to Madhya Soda. The people of Buddha were in this mood. Are we dreaming? Are we awake? Have we fallen into a delirious swoon? Do we see a vision born of intoxication? Speaking these words, the people of Buddha did not know what was happening to them. Their hearts became plunged into the great darkness of worries. And they called out, Oh, oh, King Nanda, oh, oh, Sri Krishna, because Krishna had gone into the water and he had also disappeared. Oh, Krishna, where are you both? Restless Queen Yasoda was held still by four women. Her heart had burst into flames. She sighed and sighed. Logic had no place in her thinking. All she said was, Alas, alas. So we heard that Krishna had dived in. We heard what happened to Nanda Maharaj. We heard what the Prishbasis were thinking. Now what had happened when Krishna had entered the tunnel that would lead to the abode of Aruna? Now please hear of the activities of Sri Krishna, the beloved of Brazil's goddesses of fortune, who, when having passed through the deep underwater tunnels, he finally arrived at Varuna's abode. The moment he perceived that Krishna had hurriedly entered his abode, Varuna rushed to greet and honor him. 
no one could even look at Krishna's form, which although gently dark like a glistening cloud was now red with anger. No one could look at Sri Krishna's eyes, which although they gently destroy the darkness of, it, of illusion, now glisten like two lightning flashes that would blind anyone who dared look at them. Sri Krishna's words were like thunder that reverberates during the cosmic destruction at the Kalpa's end, thus like a cloud, lightning and thunder. Sri Krishna filled everyone in Varuna's court with wonder. When, contemptuously calling out, In what hole does that jackal Varuna hide? Sri Krishna, the glory of Nanda's dynasty, entered the kingdom of Varuna. His great effulgence pained any eye that would look at it. Frightened Varuna, that had a flowing stream of loud calls. He wrapped the cloth around his neck. He offered his obeisances, his forehead meeting the ground. He folded his hands and fell down like a stick from afar. He offered his obeisances to Krishna. Seeing their master act in such a humble way, the servants of Varuna also offered obeisances to Lord Krishna. Krishna's eyes were like newly blossomed red lotus flowers. All attractive Krishna stood before Varuna and asked, Where is my noble father, who is always intent on performing noble deeds, pious activities? Folding his hands, humble Varuna sweetly said, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, your noble father, who is the best of all swan-like saintly persons, is present here. He was not taken to any other place. How may I serve your servants? Please teach me how to serve them. Peaceful at heart, Krishna said, A person who punishes insignificant persons breaks his own power into pieces. Therefore, without the slightest touch of delay, at once show me the lotus that is my father's feet. The lotuses that are my father's feet. The Lord has said, as you command, O master who rips and shreds the sufferings of the poor and fallen. Then Varuna had a silk carpet placed on the pathway that led from Sri Krishna's feet to the splendid palace where Vrata's King Nanda was staying. And bringing Nanda before Sri Krishna, who was the glorious hero of the coward people, Varuna said, My dear Lord Krishna, Govinda, be merciful to me. Here is your father. You can take him back immediately. I know your position is glorious. How can I disobey you? How can anyone impose his will upon you? In this way, Lord Krishna freed Nanda of all fears of being bound by Varuna's ropes. Nanda, at this time, was completely oblivious to the fact that he was in Varuna's kingdom. He was simply only meditating upon Krishna. How wonderful Krishna was. How many wonderful pastimes Krishna had performed. But then, the fragrance of Krishna's body entered his nostrils. And King Nanda, his rap meditation on Lord Narayan was broken and he returned to external consciousness. At this, the courtiers in Varuna's assembly were filled with wonder. Nanda slowly opened his eyes and saw Sri Krishna's glorious face and seeing Krishna he burst into tears and seeing through a film of tears he thought he must be dreaming Sri Krishna touched his father's feet he hugged him he picked him up and said Father I have come Krishna and Nanda were both overcome with emotion. Still, fear 
hearing the smiles and jokes of the people all around him, Sri Krishna kept all tears and displays of emotion tightly within his heart, and he would not display them openly. To King Nanda he said, Father, look all around you. Looking everywhere, around him, Raja King Nanda thought, Where are we? Confused, embarrassed, he gazed at his son's face. Sri Krishna said to him, Father, as we have traveled here, so we will now return to our land of Praja. Please don't think of anything else. Simply walk ahead, carefully moving the lotus flower of your feet. As Nanda and Krishna were about to depart, Varuna said in a voice choked with emotion, Oh Krishna, you are supremely merciful. Please give me one of two things. Please give me either punishment or give me your mercy, but please do not let my offense to you remain unforgiven within me. As Krishna and Nanda were about to begin their journey, Varuna came before them for a moment. He placed many services before their feet. He bowed before them. He, he made a passage of dry land that reached all the way to Brazil. He sent servants bearing glorious ornaments and other gifts to accompany Krishna and Nanda. Then his heart flooded with bliss. He danced for one Mahartha for eight forty-eight minutes. By this time, waiting on the riverbank, the breathless people of Brazil on the verge of death. Then they saw Krishna, Nanda, and Varuna's servants suddenly and cheerfully appear in the water. The people of Brazil at once fainted in bliss. Balaram alone approached Krishna and Nanda. To Brazil's King Nanda, Balaram offered respectful obeisances. When joyful Nanda hugged him, Balaram forgot the external world. For some moments, he was stunned in bliss. Again and again, Krishna offered obeisances to Balaram. Krishna had once circumambulated his mother. He gave her the sweet nectar of his touch. Again and again, he glanced at the people of Persia. One by one, each and every one of them approached Krishna. Nanda approached Krishna. Then all the people of Brazil met with Krishna and Nanda. Overcome with bliss, the people did not know one person from another. Only Krishna and Nanda remembered who was who. When the mowing of the cows, the conversations of the throngs of people, the, the showers of flowers from Swagaloka, and the sounds of musical instruments dancing, hundreds of prayers being recited became a great tumult with tumultuous sounds crashing against each other. Sri Balaram led the cows to their barn. And then, speaking with sweet words, he convinced the coward people to return to their homes. Then, after giving King Nanda a splendid sitting place, and after giving appropriate sitting places to every person there, Sri Balaram asked Sri Krishna to describe his journey. Hearing Sri Krishna's words, Sri Balaram repeated them to the coward people. By his own wish, inviting the Brahmanas, satisfying them with a delicious feast, and offering them gifts, the, the gifts they desired to, re, to, to receive, Nanda prayed for their blessings so that his observance of the vow of Ekadasi might be concluded properly and without any fault. Speaking many words, the Brahmanas blessed him and reassured him that he had properly observed the Ekadasi Vrata. Then, making a great tumult of joyful sounds, everyone returned to Brazha. His two sons at his side as he walked on the path, Vrata's King Nanda shone forward with great splendor. Then, on another day, when Krishna was not present, this is that chapter that we read just before.
for in another assembly the of the coward men asked precious king nanda about the recent wonderful events because we heard that they went to the well that was before this but anyway it's anyway this is how it's described king nanda replied by speaking many verses describing the glory of the demigod varuna glory the people of earth cannot see king nanda said oh friends please listen and I will describe how the residents of Aruna's realm are very devoted to Krishna. Hearing these descriptions, the people became filled with wonder. Considering that Sri Krishna may be the Supreme Personality of God in Himself, the people thought, because of His eternal, imperishable, and supreme knowledge and glory, Sri Krishna must be the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Even so, he is the resting place of the great treasure of wonderful feelings of love, love that brings us great bliss. They thought, we overcome, we are overcome with the thirst to the thirst of his grace. Again and again, he delights our hearts. Will he allow us to see him always, to see him without hindrance? Aware that the coward men considered him their own friend and kinsman, they did not think themselves any different from him. Sri Krishna became overwhelmed with feelings of compassion, with the idea that he himself is dependent on the coward people of Vrindavan. He thought, Now, because of what my father has said about me, his experiences of Varuna Loka, all the people of Brescia, they, they know now that I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now they yearn to see my glories and opulences, although it is not possible for them to see them all. They do not see the glories of, and opulences of Varuna, nor do they see the glories and opulences of Swagaloka because they have descended to their material world with its higher and lower destinations, created by various kinds of ignorance, desire, and action. The coward people, the true knowledge block, think that I am an ordinary conditioned soul. The condition of the people of Braja is described in these words of the Bhagavatam, 10, 11, 58. All the elderly coward men, including Nanda Maharaj, used to talk of the wonderful activities of Lord Krishna and Balaram. And they were always so much absorbed in these talks that they forgot the threefold miseries of material existence. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, they, the people of Braja, have dedicated everything to Krishna. Their lives, their property, their affection, their activities, everything was for Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, the inhabitants of Vrindavan had sacrificed everything for Krishna simply being captivated by the lotus eyes of the Lord. In Srimad Bhagavatam it is also said, My Lord, sometimes I'm puzzled, this by Brahma, as to how your Lordship will be able to repay in gratitude the devotional service of the residents of Brajna. Although I know that you are the supreme source of all benedictions, I am puzzled to know how you will be able to repay all the services that you are now receiving from these residents of Vrindavan. I think of how you are so kind, so magnanimous, that even Putana, who came to cheat you by dressing herself as a very affectionate mother, was awarded liberation and the actual post of mother. And I remember how other demons belonging to the same family, such as Agasur and Bakasur, were also favored with liberation. Under the circumstance, Brahma says, I am puzzled. The residents of Vrindavan have given you everything. They've given you their bodies, their minds, their love, their homes. Everything is utilized for your purpose. So how will you be able to repay their debt? You have already given yourself to Putana. I surmise that you shall ever remain a debtor to the residents of Vrindavan, being able to repay their service. From these verses, it should be understood that Lord Krishna thinks the love of the people of Bra that Bra the people of Braja feel for me is the greatest of all love. It brings even me under their control. The glory of their love is not like the glory manifested by the illusory material energy. I cannot bear to hear the statements that the love of the people of Braja 
to feel for me is ordinary like the love others feel. I know their love for me is the great net of loving desires and affectionate activities. The truth is, here Krishna is speaking his own mind, the truth is that for kalpas and kalpas, from past time, without any beginning, I am deeply in debt to the people of Prussia. Even if I give all my wealth and opulence, still it is not enough to repay the love that they have given me. If I give to them all my supreme wealth, all my opulence, and all of my glory, and if I give it to them again and again, many times over, still is not enough to repay my debt to them. The glory and opulence possessed by Varuna filled my father with wonder. That thought makes me unhappy. As I look into this matter, I see that they love me more than I love them. With the help of Yogamaya, who wishes that all good may come to them, I will now reveal to the people of Brazil the supreme opulences that they already possess. After thinking in this way, on another day, at the place named Purudwar, in an assembly of coward people, including his wonderfully learned father, an assembly that had just heard the Adivarada Purana spoken by an expert reciter, Sri Krishna explained that by bathing during the full moon day of the month of Kartik at Brahma Kund, which would later grant the fulfillment of desires to occur, the coward people would attain the fulfillment of all their desires. Then, Krishna took all the coward people with him. He went to that lake in the morning of the appropriate day. After arriving there with all the coward men, after bathing in the water, after emerging from the water, after stepping onto the dry land, and after removing the covering power of his illusory potency, Sri Krishna revealed to the coward men their original home, which is eternal, full of knowledge and full of bliss, which bears the name Golok, which is beyond the touch of the material energy and the supremely beautiful spiritual sights and nectar scents, touch and sounds of which cannot be perceived even by advanced transcendentalists. As a curtain is removed to reveal a splendidly beautiful and colorful painting, so Sri Krishna removed the curtain of Maya and revealed the spiritual world which bears the name of Brahmaloka because it is the abode of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Brahman, a spiritual form resembles the shape of human beings. Seeing themselves in that spiritual world and seeing Krishna who was like a glistening tilak mark adorning the forehead of his family. Also, there in their midst, and seeing the Vedas personified, also there reciting many prayers glorified Sri Krishna's Gokul pastimes, beginning with his pastimes of his birth, the coward men of Brother, now filled with wonder and free of all grief, felt bliss at every moment. After showing all this, Goloka, there, the spiritual world. After showing all this to the coward men of Brethren, whose hearts were filled with love for him, Sri Krishna, the enemy of the demons, in order to complete his pastimes, which included the killing of many demons, took the coward men out of Goloka and brought them again to the earth. The speaker of this narrative, Snigdakanta, that brought the narration to its conclusion by saying, O Nanda, O King of Brazil, your son who defeats the kings of all the planets, thus showed you and your followers your own original home. I offer my respectful obeisances to Sri Krishna, who wears a garland of the forest flowers, and who revealed to the coward men the truth that they are actually residents of the spiritual world of Golan. Hare Krishna, yeah. We have gone to uh, 
this whole chapter 28. Um, thank you, Fish Fishalak Shapabu, for your comment. We spoke at the beginning about the uh, sadness that fulfilled, filled our heart by the passing away of Pankajan Hebrew. Thank you for reminding us again. Uh, Pavitra Prabhu, please. Hare yeah, Krishna Maharaj, my business is to just speak. Best Maharaj, my condolences to the passing away of our dear Pujari in Mayapur. Mm -hmm. And I would like to ask Maharaj in the fifth canto, chapter five, text number 18. It is said that one who cannot deliver his dependents from the path of repeated death and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, a husband, a mother, or a worshipful demigod. We see, for instance, Yamara did this priest to Yamadutas, Varuna did preach to his servants, even Lord Narayan did not preach to the gatekeepers of by Punta. If a devotee commits an offense, or that offense should be taken by the spiritual master. That um, that is a good question. That uh, the spiritual master, it is said, takes the karma of his disciple. That um, so yes. He will suffer for that also. That, um, mm -hmm. Therefore, we have to be careful in our dealings. That uh, we are always representatives of Srila Prabhupada. We should be aware of that. That, uh, but yes, sure, we have to be careful in that. Thank you, Prabhupada Prabhupada. Uh, Mother Sita, please. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I want to ask a question from the last chapter. Yeah. Um, we see uh, when Brahma did to offer prayers after his offense, Krishna does not really respond to those prayers. He's right. indifferent. But in case of Indra, as soon as Indra finishes, Krishna starts responding. Why is that? Is it because um, Indra's, uh, although Indra's offense is more intense, but uh, his offense resulted in Krishna being with his devotees and Brahma actually separated Krishna from his devotees? Or is it because with higher, uh, higher position comes higher responsibility? So even, you know, the result is more. And, uh that's a good question, that uh, trying to measure whether, whether Krishna, whether or not Krishna uh, replies or remains silent. Why is that? Uh, I can see one reason, and there may be other angles, but in the case of Brahma, Krishna was in the mood of a coward boy. But, and he wanted to go back for the picnic with this. That, uh, and he did not want to break that mood. Because otherwise, if he would reply to Brahma, he would have to take the position of the Supreme Personality of God. And he did not want to do that. In the case of Indra, he was in an isolated place, separate from the coward boys. But, uh, and he accepted Indra's uh, begging for forgiveness as a part of the pastime there. That, uh, and in that, in that way, it's different. And so, it's the rasa is important here. Yeah. The rasa. But, um, 
So that is an important factor. That, uh, otherwise, I don't see any other reasons, but it does not mean that there are no other reasons. Who am I to speak upon these things? Does that help? Thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you. So, Mother Priya, please. Hey, Krishna Maharaj. Um, I have two questions. The first one is about um, the time of bathing, because here we learn in this pastime that it's inauspicious to bathe before sunrise. And also, um, in Krishna's, when we read later about Krishna's daily activities, it says that first of all, he wakes up and he just kind of washes his hands and mouth, and then he does his meditation on himself. And then only later, just before sunrise, he bathes and then uh, chants chance Gayatri. So, um, yeah, but in ISKCON, we typically bathe many hours before sunrise sometimes, you know, two in the morning, three in the morning. And uh, I used to hear that um, in New Vrindavan, they would go and bathe in the river in the dark and things. So I'm just wondering that if it's inauspicious, then why is it part of our daily program that we do that? Uh, well, I remember Mother Narayani saying, in the time was that Srila Prabhupada was with us, we didn't care for all these things. We just, in the morning, the day after Kalasi, the Dvadasi, they were cooking, and when it was ready, then we would break the, the fast. That. But later it, become, it became, became important, they started to calculate it, put it in a calendar and so on. That, uh, but Krishna sees our intentions. And that's also a lesson we, le we learn here. That, yeah, that generally this time is inauspicious. But uh, because of the short Ekadashi, it, it, it should have it, it's permitted to do it. So this this uh, this is what we learn from this pastime. It's permitted to do it. That, uh, but of course we 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 take a shower before sunrise. But usually bath in a river. But like you are saying, they were doing it in Yuvinavan. and that's interesting. That. Uh, Yes. Anyway, they they didn't get caught by Varuna's servants, probably. <laughs> that, uh, that uh, but I would say this is extraordinary. Normally we we don't do that. But Nanda Maharaj just yes, these coward boys who were bathing in the in the river. So for missing receipts or invoices for expenses, who does that? Well, who is speaking? No. Yes. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Mother Prabhupada Priya, is that uh, fine? Yeah, that's okay. Um, should I ask my other question? Yeah, sure. Okay, so the other one is that I was a little confused about which uh, spiritual abode was actually shown because it's very clear that he showed them Brahman at first, and then uh, it's not exactly described by Kunta, but um, in the abode that he does show, Krishna is there, but the, the personified Vedas are offering prayers, so it doesn't look like Goloka, because in Goloka yeah. there's not that, it's more, it seems like it's by, uh, Goloka with a Vaikuntha mood or something. Yeah. Can you explain? So this is Sridhar comment, he writes, is the original commentator of the Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. He says, he's going to show them first Brahman, and then Vaikuntha, and then Goloka Vaikuntha. That's what Sri Swami says. But like you said, from the past time, this is not 100% clear from the verses, but this is what our Acharya says, Sri Srila Swami. That uh, and Shilavishvanath Sarkar 
So I can see that this fan is here for Kitako comments. He's saying, yes, that uh, he, he, Krishna showed them their own planet where they belong. So that we can also accept. But then the Vedas personified of the prayers, that looks more like Vaikuntha. So all, all these elements are there and it's not clear from the verses to see that in but this is what our Acharya's comment that uh, Brahman, Vaikuntha and Goloka Vaikuntha. It's not described that they see themselves there at all, is it? Uh, no, not that I know uh, that, but it's well said by Vishwanath uh, Sakravati Taku that they, that they felt at home in that atmosphere of uh, Koloka Vaikuntha. That, um, yes, they felt it, it, it's like Alfindaran. Mm. What does that actually mean, Maharaj, Goloka Vaikuntha? Well, you have the Vaikuntha planets, uh, the Vaikuntha planets, and, and, the, and the highest planet is Krishna Loka. A Vaikuntha means without fear. And Koloka Vaikuntha. Koloka Vindavan is also part of Vaikuntha. It, it is also without material fear, right? That therefore, but uh, but some, yeah, a narrower uh, interpretation is Vaikuntha is only the abode of Lord Narayan and his many exp expansions. That's another interpretation there. In Birat Bhagavanta Amrita, uh, Goloka Vrindavan is described as being beyond the material and spiritual worlds. And that's also interesting, beyond Vaikuntha. That, um, so by, by that we can understand the nature of and the difference between Vaikuntha and Goloka Vrindavan. Is that all? I also heard it described by um, Banu Swami that there's a uh, Within Goloka, Goloka Vrindavan, there are different uh, areas. There's um, Aishwarya, Goloka Vrindavan, and there's Madhurya. Have you heard that kind of description? There is. Say that again. There, there's a part of Goloka Vrindavan where there's more of an Aishwarya mood. So it, it seems like this is, if that. If what's being described here is Goloka Vrindavan in the spiritual world and the Vedas are offering prayers, it seems like it's that part that it's actually Goloka, where Krishna is there as, you know, Krishna the cowherd boy, but he's being worshipped in all reverence. This is interesting. I did not read that comment of Pan uh, Swan. I would be interested to also know more about this. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Maybe the last comment by Avinash Maturpo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisance. Accept my obeisance. <clears throat> I was just uh, I wanted to understand that uh, all these coward boys uh, whom uh, Krishna took with him, they were already in Nitya Siddhya. So they already belonged to the <clears throat> those locals. And why was it uh, he felt there, there was a need for them to be taken taken now? It appears that they are going there, yeah, uh, seeing for the first time. Is it that, uh, if my understanding is correct, that they were not valuing under yoga my influence? They were not valuing the earthly uh, <clears throat> uh, one and uh, that is why he wanted to show them the importance of. Atli Vindavan, uh, as good as uh, something like that. I yeah. wanted to understand that. Yeah, that, that, that is explained by the commentaries that I read. They were feeling ordinary persons, although they were residents, eternal residents of the local Vindavan. They felt them as ordinary persons, and therefore, it's in the commentary when. 
when they became aware for some moments because of the Varuna pastime that uh, that that Krishna is the it's is a supreme person they asked them yep you can fulfill all our desires and Krishna said yes what do you want and one of the coward boys said I want liberation but they are far beyond liberation but they are feeling like that that's their humility we are the most fallen that we are fallen the ordinary human beings like everyone that's how they feel so the Uttamadika feels himself the lowest and they were feeling like that that uh, yes then we see, we, we can understand their consciousness. There was so-called suffering, but it was bliss. But still, they they are thinking themselves as part of this material world. Especially this pastime today gives an insight in their consciousness, which is so different than that. Um, yes. They see themselves as ordinary human beings. Does that help to understand? Yes, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, thank you. So, that's... Uh, in. Hare Krishna, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, Mataji. Okay. Yes, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Yes, Mataji, My obeisances to all of you, glorious Thank students, you. and uh, obeisances to Bhakti Prabhav Maharaj. Yes, accept my. Today I understand that it's. Dandavat it, uh, Maharaj. Today I understand it's the last day of class, is it? Yes, it is. So, uh, yeah, I actually came to express my gratitude to you, Bhakti Prabhupada Maharaj, for uh, without you, actually, I don't know how we would be running this Bhakti Vedanta. Uh, you have taken the task very seriously. I know that. Urijan Prabhu had instructed you a long time ago to um, teach the Bhaktivedanta. And not only have been teaching, but of course, there are some other attached uh, functions of a teacher, which includes the assessment, which you have been very willingly, voluntarily doing. So we are very, very um, grateful for that. Yes. Yes, thank you, Mother Pashanta. When Bhutan asked me 10 years ago to teach this course, I felt I should not do it. And, uh, but somewhere or another, I felt I'm not qualified. And, uh, but out of duty, I I try to do what he asked me. That, mm. but uh, I must say that because I am not qualified, I need a lot of time to prepare for these courses and hear a lot. That um, so, and I need to do that. Otherwise, my presentations will not be on the level as our predecessors. And I want to the VHG to present high quality education and I feel myself responsible for that. So it's out of this duty that I'm trying my best, but factually I should not be teaching this. I guess. Yeah, well, when it comes to the 10th canto, naturally, it is very challenging, extremely challenging. But as a service, as you say, we try, uh, we try to be an instrument and 
the most important is the speaking and the hearing. The hearing is very, it's very magic. We are receiving the knowledge by hearing and there, there's a huge impact of the hearing. So, 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 yeah, someone has to do it. Someone has to agree to become the instrument. And you did, you agreed. So uh, we are very, very uh, grateful for that. And I was teaching one chapter on me of this uh, Vrindavan Lila. And uh, yes, it's a different domain altogether. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a different world. And what do we know about it? <laughs> mm -hmm. So we can only... Uh, repeat the words that we have heard from our teachers. In our case, we heard for nine years from Burijan Prabhu, and I still relish hearing his wonderful classes. Uh, Prabhu is a, an extremely deep thinker and uh, a true Bhaktivedanti. He has the um, intelligence, the depth of philosophical understanding, and at the same time, he has the heart. So that is that is a, a, a jewel. Uh, listening to his classes is uh, unbelievably uh, nourishing. So we repeat what we have heard from him, and then we have the acharyas, and we have so many um, also other places to look in Prabhupada's books where we can find further information. Mm -hmm. And then we chant and and we pray and try to uh, feel as insignificant as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is a challenge, definitely. Yeah. So let me hear from the students. So, uh, did Maharaj? Uh, how was Maharaj's presentation? Was it uh, not just Maharaj's presentation? Actually, all we had several teachers. Um, is everyone uh, satisfied? Is everyone happy with the presentations? Yes, no, nobody. Somebody says simply wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Mataji, it is, uh, everything is amazing and so nice, so inspiring. And uh, I would like to participate again and again. I'm a Delhi student. And uh, uh, this is really wonderful what we have done. The Bhakti Vedanta classes are so nice. And that is uh, uh, Mahashringa Prabhu. Yes, he's a very avid mm -hmm. hearer. Yes. Yes. No, due to my health, I could not uh, join properly last few classes. I, my health is not good and uh, blood pressure is low and i am feeling giddiness and uh, some physical problems are there sorry i am extremely sorry for that hmm. Prabhupada priya hi krishna yeah i really appreciate how um maharaj takes the time to um, research all of the commentaries of the acharyas and uh, he explains them all in great detail and he really brings in the, all the different angles, you know, that Prabhupada said that we should study his books uh, from different angles of vision. So mm -hmm. Maharaj brings in the different angles of the, the acharyas, and he uh, he is able to, um, you know, weave them together to give us a, a more uh, well-rounded and um, more solid understanding. I really appreciate that because myself, I don't have all those commentaries, so this is a lot of it has been uh, really new for me, and it's. It's enabled me to appreciate Krishna's pastimes in a, in a much better way. So I really thank you so much, Maharaj, for all of your hard work and selfless service to all of us, although we, we don't deserve it, but feeling so fortunate to have had your association for many, many days. Well, you are all fortunate souls, selected souls. I can only remember when I was studying the Bhagavatam. It was an amazing experience. Chitarani. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, unlike Prabhupada Priya, I do have all the commentaries. So I, uh, what I appreciate most about Maharaj is his humility and his purity. And uh, it is just amazing. It's so touching to the heart 
and how he, you know, shares his realizations and how he answers his questions. And also, you can see the hard work he puts in. And that is amazingly inspiring that he's there on time every day and he's, you know, he would have done all his homework. It's, it's quite amazing. So I'm really grateful to be a part of this class. Thank you so much. Thank you. Very nice. Porna Masipriya. Hare Krishna Mataji. I, um, Mataji, I feel very fortunate to be with Bhaktivedanta student and to listen to the Maharaj. It is amazing. Uh, it is without hearing, one cannot make uh, to any spiritual advancement. Thanks. Pavitra. Thank you, Samataji. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to Maharaj. One of Maharaj, one of his qualities, Maharaj is always time conscious. Maharaj doesn't waste time. Maharaj is so loving and Maharaj is so kind. And Maharaj can answer all questions from any angles. So we are very grateful to Maharaj's presence in this uh, VIHD session. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Pavitra. So our students seem to be appreciating. Hare Krishna, I would also like to add something that um, I, I'm very grateful for all the, the valuable feedback that Maharaj has given on the, the seminars and uh, the presentations, you know, I, I, I feel that when um, we send our aims and outlines for the, the seminar, he really uh, studies it very thoroughly and thinks very deeply about um, the topic and uh, the advice he gives is, is just very enlightened. You know, I feel like it's coming straight from Krishna and you know, I read his feedback and I'm just like, yes, that's what, it, that's what I really want. It's like he tells me what the direction that I, I really wanted to go, but somehow wasn't able to express it. And yeah, so mm -hmm. thank you so much, Maharaj. Hi. Yes, Maharaj, this is, um, besides the teaching, we are very appreciative at the VIG for all your work on, on assisting the, with the assessment, uh, giving valuable feedback to the students so that they can um, write their seminars and and all of you start thinking there is also a thesis which needs to be produced so Maharaj will also be helping with that he already gave some guidelines which i believe we have uploaded um, that you can read and uh, i would suggest um, that uh, in the beginning of the next semester, maybe we could have uh, uh, keep a session specifically, Maharaj, for presenting something about the thesis, so that the devotees begin, you know, taking it seriously and um, start thinking and uh, make them feel a little comfortable how they can go about it. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to serve also to assist, to assist in the writing of uh, thesis that uh, I've, I've done a PhD and I wrote a lot and I know how to, uh, to guide others to write a thesis. So I'm happy to help with that. I think Mother Kasturika is also a hand raised. Kasturika? Yeah, please speak. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for facilitating the study. I often feel like this is a class with so many uh, different levels of devotees. You know, I fall in the lower grade of the devotees. But still, you facilitate, you help us so much, and you know, you bring us to the lay, to you know, help us to push towards the higher grade of the study. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, I ever can study so many commentaries in my life. I don't know, but uh, it was so helpful. Just you do so much hard work just to help us absorb in Srimad Bhagavatam. I hope one day I can really put my heart into the study of Srimad Bhagavatam. Thank you, Maharaj. 
We are extremely yeah. fortunate to have your association. Well, th thank you all for your comments. That um, I'm looking forward to continue to serve you, especially for my own purification. So I will try <coughs> to my best for that. That uh, I see also the uh, table of an Prabhu. You want? You have also your hand raised, please. Shubhuvanath, you want to speak? Are you there? Mm. Seems to be frozen. Yeah, okay. Anyway, we are over to... How is, our, how is your health, Maharaj? Is, are you recovered after the operation? You're fine? Um, my, my health... My health... My health is, is, is seemingly good, that uh, I, I recovered after the operation, hmm. uh, fully recovered, really it's Krishna's mercy. The only thing I have is some tensions in my, in my left, head, left side of my head and uh, oh. a tinnitus that I'm suffering from since 10 years and it becomes a little higher last for the last years and I have to take more rest than usual. But what can we do? The body is over 60 and yeah, we have to tolerate these things. That, uh, but uh, I'm grateful that I can still serve. That's the most important. That, uh, so, it's quite good. It, according to the circumstances, it cannot be better as Christmas Masses. Good. Thank you very much, Maharaj. We are looking forward to the next semester, which will continue with the Vrindavan pastime and then move on to Mathura, Mathura. with Jain. Yeah. Yes. So that will also be very exciting. Um, so. Hopefully all our students are going to continue. We lost a few during after the first semester, but those who have remained seem to be steady. Yeah. So we'll continue. Yeah, I hope also that they all remain then and that, um, yes, it's so blissful and it's the best, exper best experience in our life, I would say. Maharaj, please, I have one request. Oh, here he is. Yes, table of an problem. Yes, Maharaj, I have one request. Please, I want you to be, because I, I don't think I will be able to give remuneration, because normally, Prashanta uh, Mataji have often tell us this from different uh, uh, studies that we need to give some uh, remuneration, you know, some duction after every you know, uh, uh, course like this. But I may not be able to give, but I do request that uh, if you can kindly be my subject uh, teacher, eternally my life is successful. Thank you so much, Mara. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Krishna. Uh, the the Dakshin, you don't have to worry about that. The VHG has arranged for that. Uh, and that uh, thank you very much. Hi, Krishna. Jai Prabhupada. Thank you, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. All the, all my friends, Mataji, Prabhupada.